Hello, I'm Brandon, and this is our GX2 series of electric diaphragm pumps. I have two models here in front of me. The first one is our GX2C dual electric pump, and this one is just our GX2 dual electric pump. So we'll start with the GX2C dual first. Uh, we'll start at the inlet. So at your inlet, we have a three-way ball valve, and you have two hose barbs that you could use for your inlet. So say if you wanted to have your first be your hose that you're running to your fertilizer tank, and then your second one, if you had a small rinse tank, and if you wanted to fill it with water, an RV antifreeze, then you could run a hose to that, switch your ball valve to wherever, to whichever tank you want to feed from. Coming from the ball valve, we'll come into a 50 mesh filter. We do also have an 80 mesh and a 20 mesh, so we can switch that out um, if you would like us to have a different kind of filter in there. Once we come out of the filter, we come into two dual electric diaphragm pumps. Now the two pumps that we use are 5.3 gallon per minute pumps. Uh, when you have both of these pumps plugged in, uh, like we do in parallel, you don't get over 10 gallon per minute of flow through it. Once you plumb up the pumps, you really lose about half of what the pump can do. So with the two 5.3 gallon per minute pumps on there, we don't recommend going above five gallon per minute with them uh, just to protect the lifespan of the pump the last few bit longer. Um, even though you can apply a little bit more if you need to. So as we come out of the two 12 volt pumps, uh, on the outlet side of these pumps, you will have a check valve in here. And sometimes what will happen when these pumps get a little bit older is these check valves will get stuck uh, or if you're using a really sticky product, a real nasty product, what you can do, get a pair of needle nose pliers and pull them out. It's a light, it almost looks like a spearhead looking piece. Um, you don't have to have it in the system, but it is nice to have um, to prevent any sort of backflow. But if your tank is sealed, you shouldn't have it backflow anyways. And this is a quick release system. So on this tab, you can push up and then you can unlock the elbow or you can put it back in and then you can close it and that will lock your elbow in place. Coming out of the pumps here, uh, we'll wire it together, run one hose, back to the front of the system, and normally right here is where we would have a 60 pound pressure gauge. In this case, I don't have a pressure gauge here because it's going to be on the red ball manifold out on the implement. So the other piece that we would be looking at is this red bypass valve. Now this adjustable valve, um, a lot of guys will send back to the tank for agitation or they'll send right back to the inlet of the system and use it as a way to lower pressure. The best way to lower the pressure of your system though is to switch out your orifice that you have at the row, either if that's a disc orifice or a microtube. That's the best way to lower the pressure because what will happen a lot of times is guys will open this too far and then you start to lose flow going out to the row. You have too much flow being recirculated. So on the back of this, uh, when it's built from us, we will have this plugged, but it'll come with a different fitting where one end is a push stem to where you can lock that in place of the plug that we have in there, and then you'll have a 3 8 hose barb on the other side, and then you can run that hose back to a tank or back to the inlet, wherever you want to run that hose to. And then the other piece, this will be your bleeder valve. So if you're having issues priming the pump, go ahead and you can open this bleeder valve, and then it helps get the air out of the system right at the pumps, instead of having to push that air all the way through all the plumbing on your implement, through your small orifices, and down to the row. Coming through the system, we have a two-way ball valve here, so you can close this if you wanted to. If you didn't want any flow to come out through your flow meter and out to the rows, and you just wanted to recirculate your product, say, back to your tank. So you could close that, or normally you'll want it open. The handle will face towards where your flow should be going. And then the last component we have in the plumbing is our magnetic flow meter. So for most guys on these electric systems, the magnetic flow meter size that you're going to be using is a 0.3 gallon per minute on the low end, up to five gallon per minute on your high end. Now, since we don't recommend going above five gallon per minute anyways, the flow meter works out pretty well. Now we do have several other sizes as well, so if you needed a smaller flow meter, if you're doing lower rates, or if you needed a higher flow meter, then we can put that on the system here for you. So we also provide uh, zip tied to the flow meter when you first get this pump system. Uh, two fittings that you can thread onto the flow meter. Uh, both three quarter inch thread is the top of the flow meter and it comes out with a three quarter inch hose bar. We have a straight and an elbow depending on how you want to run your plumbing. Uh, the other neat thing on the flow meter here is for this newer model we will have a red LED here 
and that'll indicate if your flow meter is powered on. So if you're having issues to where you can't read flow on your monitor, um, come back, look at your flow meter. Now this red LED is normally pretty dim. Put two hands over it, just make it dark in there, and see if that flow meter light is on. And then when flow is actively going through the flow meter, that light should be flashing. And then you can come out of the flow meter, so like in this case, if I were to have section valves, they would be mounted on top right here. And then you would run from your section valve to your manifold. But in this case, I don't have section valves, so I'm going to come out of my flow meter and then just go out to my red ball manifold. Looking at the GX2 dual pump that we have, for this chassis, we do have two different styles. This version is the one where the legs come down vertically. And on this model, I also have another mounting bracket. This mounting bracket we normally use to mount on the tongue planters. So we have uh, two slots right here, and they go anywhere from eight inches wide, which is the most common tongue size we see for width, or you can go 10 inches wide. And then for the other chassis that we have like this, it'll still have the legs that are down here, but instead of them coming down vertical, they'll be flat, they'll be horizontal, so you can mount it on top of the toolbar if you wanted to. And then for both these chassis pumps, we have multiple different mounting brackets depending on the planner that you have, so we try to accommodate for every kind of bar that's out there. So on this system, we'll just start at the inlet, three quarter inch hose barb, and then we will come into a 50 mesh filter on the inlet. We will then come out of the filter, tee off into both of the pumps, same kind of 5.3 electric pumps that we have on the GX2C over there. As we come out of the electric pumps, right here will be your bleeder valve. So again, if you're having issues with air getting in the system, open up the bleeder valve, you can help get these pumps primed even faster. Coming out of the uh, pumps, the bleeder valve will come in through an 80 mesh filter on the outlet side. And then from the 80 mesh filter, uh, this will be your adjustable valve, similar to the red one on your GX2C pump, and just loosen the locking nut, and then you can open your valve here. Again, would only recommend opening this if you're doing some sort of agitation. Uh, wouldn't use that to lower your pressure if you wouldn't have to. Try to switch out your disc corpus or your microtube at the row. That would be the better option for lowering your pressure. So normally we want to keep this closed, just to prevent any issues of not getting enough flow out through the flow meter. So instead of coming down to the bypass, now if we go up, same thing, we go through the same magnetic flow meter, and then we can go from the magnetic flow meter out to the manifold that we would have out on the bar. In this case, if I were to have section valves, they would be mounted on top here, but since I don't, I'm gonna go right to my manifold. Looking at some of the other components that we have, uh, we would have our PWM, controller for both systems. So if you were to plug in through our AutoX controller or go through a Green Star, an Ag Leader, a Trimble, whatever kind of rate controller you have, you would need the PWM controller. Uh, so we will include that with the GX2 series of pumps. Uh, what we also include strapped on in the back of these systems is the rest of the harnessing you need. So the harnessing to go to your liquid rate controller that you would have or to go to our uh, rate controller if you were to use ours instead. We also have the power cables for the PWM because for these PWMs, we highly recommend that you put them to the battery of the tractor. Uh, don't connect them anywhere in the cab. It might work when you're sitting still, but once you start driving, you're gonna lose power to these PWMs. It's gonna start throwing fits. Your pump probably isn't gonna work. So put it to the battery of the tractor. And then we'll give you a brake cable at the hitch so you don't have to run the cable between the bar and take that off every time. But that would conclude everything for the GX2 series of pumps. Uh, feel free to send us an email at info at agexcel.com or give us a call at our office 877-218-1981.